Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Truth Seekers podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker, and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. In our last episode, God parted the waters of the Red Sea and rescued the Israelites from the Egyptians. They walked through on dry ground, never to see the Egyptians again. You may think that was the end of the story for the Israelites, but actually it was only just the beginning. In today's episode, we are going to find out what happens next as the Israelites journey through the desert to get to the promised land of Canaan. But first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been tempted to complain? Maybe something didn't go your way and you were upset, so you wanted to cry and complain and maybe even grumble under your breath a little. Well, the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, to do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. You see, when we choose not to complain, but to focus on the good and be thankful instead, we will be an example to those around us of God's love and goodness. This was a hard lesson that the Israelites were going to have to learn. After Moses led the Israelites from the Red Sea, they went into the desert. You see, the Israelites had to pass through the desert to get to the land God had promised them in Canaan. It was a rough start to their journey. For the first three days, they traveled without finding any water. When they finally came to a place where they found water, they couldn't drink it because it was bitter. But instead of trusting God to take care of them, they immediately started grumbling and complaining. They cried out to Moses, What are we going to drink? Well, then Moses did the only thing he knew to do. He cried out to the Lord. The Lord then showed Moses a piece of wood. Um, do you think Moses was thinking, Lord, this is wood, not water. How are we to drink this? But the Lord told Moses to throw the piece of wood into the water. And do you know what happened? After Moses threw the piece of wood into the water, the water became sweet and good to drink. Dear truth seekers, there is a very important lesson we must learn in this story. You see, God was testing the Israelites. No, not like a test that you take in school to see how much you've learned but a test to see if they would trust God and put all of their faith in Him. All they could see was bitter water in front of them. But with God, all things are possible. They only had to believe. They should have known God would take care of them. He had already parted the sea for them. So God, like a loving father, said to them, If you will listen carefully to my voice, and do what is right. If you pay attention and do what I tell you, I will take care of you. I will not bring any diseases upon you as I did the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. What a good promise the Lord had given to them. God was letting them know right then and there that he would be the one to take care of them if they would listen to him and obey him. He only wanted to protect them and take care of them. So the whole community of Israelites set out again and continued traveling through the desert. They had been traveling through the desert for almost two months when the people started grumbling and complaining again. They started to cry, Oh, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt! There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us into this desert to starve us all. Can you believe it? After everything God had done for them, 
After making the water sweet to drink, they still did not trust that God would take care of them. When they saw there was no food, they went back to their old ways of grumbling and complaining. God, in his goodness, said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Did you hear that? God was going to test them again. God wanted to test them because he is like a loving father and wanted them to trust him each day that he would take care of them. He would only give them what they needed for each day. They were going to have to trust him day by day to give them the food they needed. So then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And while Aaron was speaking, the whole Israelite community looked toward the desert and there before them was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at evening, you will eat meat and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. So that evening, quail came and covered the camp. Do you know what quail is? Quail is a type of bird that you can eat for food. God sent them quail in the evening for them to have meat to eat. And in the morning, when they woke, there was a layer of small drops of water called dew on the ground. When the dew went away, suddenly there appeared thin flakes like frost on the ground of the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? And Moses said, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The Lord has said that each one of you is to gather as much as he needs. He told the Israelites they were to gather an omer for each person. What is an omer, you ask? An omer is a measurement. Have you ever used a measuring cup to help your mom or dad when you are baking something good to eat in the kitchen? Well, an omer was about nine cups full. So each Israelite was allowed to take nine cups full of bread each day for each person in their family. The Bible says when they measured it by the omer, each person had just enough to eat for the day, not too much and not too little. Moses said to the Israelites, Do not keep any until morning. Eat all of it for the day, because the Lord will provide again tomorrow. But there were some in the camp who did not believe that the Lord would provide again the next day. They were afraid they wouldn't have enough. So they only ate part of their bread and saved the rest for the next day. But this was not following the instructions of the Lord. When they woke up the next morning, they found worms crawling in it and it was no good to eat. You see, God was testing them again. He did not want them to save it for the next day. He wanted them to trust him and have faith in him that he would give them just what they needed for each day. The people of Israel called the bread manna. It was white and tasted like wafers made with honey. And Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omer amount of manna in it. Then place it before the Lord to be kept for the generations to come, so they can see the bread the Lord gave us to eat in the desert when he brought us out of Egypt. And the Israelites ate manna until they came to the land they settled in, the promised land of Canaan. Dear truth seekers, what is the truth that we find in this story? What truth is God speaking to you? The truth that we find in this story is that God wants us to put our full trust and faith in Him. 
He also wants us to obey His every word. He gives us instructions for how to follow Him and live for Him, and He wants to know that we will do what He says. He gives us instructions like He did the Israelites because He loves us and wants to take care of us. The Israelites had grumbled and complained because they didn't believe that God really had their best interest. They didn't believe that God was going to take care of them. They thought they would have been better off in Egypt. Can you imagine going back to Egypt and staying as slaves when God had freed them and promised them good things? Maybe things aren't going the way you planned. Maybe things look a bit scary and you don't know what is going to happen next. But that is the perfect time to raise your hands and say, God, I trust you. Even though I can't see what will happen next, I know that you are going to take care of me. Can you say that to God today? Can you say, God, I trust you? Try it. Instead of complaining, thank God for loving you and taking care of you. He is your Father and He will never let you down. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Exodus chapters 15 and 16. Stay tuned for our next episode as we continue to follow the Israelites through the desert. Will they learn to trust in God or will they keep grumbling and complaining? You'll just have to listen to find out. Let me pray for you before we go. Dear Father, we thank you for the lesson that we learned in today's story. We learned that you are a good God who wants to take care of us. You also want us to trust you and obey you. Help us the next time we are tempted to complain or fear about the future, to put our faith in you and believe that you will take care of us. You will never let us down. Just as you provided food for the Israelites in the desert, you will provide everything we need. You say that we are valuable to you and you take care of your own. We ask you to forgive us for the times we have lost faith and complained, and we ask that you will give us the strength to believe. Amen. Thank you for joining me this week, and I look forward to our time together next week.